I'm aware that this book is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but do they really have to keep singing? Hello friends and welcome to this vlog. Here we are in the year of our Lord 2020 about to read a Hunger Games book. What? I don't know. I don't think I have processed. Like, up until like a week or two leading up to this release, I was chill about it. I didn't care that much and then it hit me. I reread the Hunger Games trilogy and it hit me because like, here's the thing. I don't think I spoke about the Hunger Games on this channel at all up until this point, but it is one of my favorite trilogies. I read this long before like the movies came out. I was just like, I read the first book like right when it came out. This was back before I could even speak English. So this is like Harry Potter territory for me, okay? This was like 2010 or something, 2009, something like that. I don't exactly remember, so that's over a decade. And I just followed the releases and it meant so much to me. And I was always very passionate about like what happens in the books and like the relationships in the books. And like, at first I was very disappointed about The Ballad of Song Songbirds and Snakes because if you don't know, this essentially follows President Snow as he gets into, goes into his power, like as he gains power in Pan Am. So I was disappointed about that because I was, I don't know what I was hoping for. I guess I was hoping for not exactly a sequel to The, ga to the Hunger Games, but maybe a book that would like feature those characters in like cameo way you know and like right now i don't know how much cameo we can get here but we can hope um yeah i don't know i think that's fair for an intro i don't know i'm gonna sit down and read for a bit i'm so excited oh my god i can't believe this is happening this is this is big my friends this is big i finished chapter one here's my immediate thoughts and reactions Remember how I said in my, like, starting clip that, like, how many cameos can there be? Sorry about the noises. <laughs> my mom was getting lunch ready. So, like, remember how I said, like, how can there be any cameos? Bitch was wrong. <laughs> There's cameos. Especially one that I, like, really did not see coming. And I'm like, is this too convenient? I don't know. And currently, I don't care because it was, like, a chef's kiss thingy. Other than that... I actually do have some thoughts on this. Like, it's kind of interesting to see what the Hunger Games looked like when they were at their 10th anniversary, because this takes place, like, on the 10th anniversary of, like, the Hunger Games, and, like, how the capital reacted to the Hunger Games as well, and, like, that it wasn't the celebration that we know from the trilogy, the original trilogy, and also that it totally felt different and that like the rules were different and like that the mentorships were different it's very interesting to see also the like because this is technically just 10 years after the dark days right so like think like europe after like the first world war when some countries were like in some real deep shit econ economically econ economically econ economically wow that went somewhere so like that's also interesting to see because you can definitely see that affecting the districts as well and that's like well it's interesting i don't have a different word for it right now because like i don't know what's gonna happen the only thing i'm worried about sorry i'm kind of sleepy the only thing i'm worried about is that like this is somehow going to make snow into like this I'm only a monster because bad things happened to me and I was betrayed by love. I obviously don't even know if there's like any romance in this book, but like that's my main worry. That it's like somehow gonna include romance and like a tragedy out of which he will come as alive and the other party will not. And that's why he's a monster. I just don't want to see that. <laughs> like, obviously I have no clue if that's what happens. This is like literally just me theorizing. This is not like spoilers or anything. This is just me like talking to a camera. Like this is what I really do not want to happen in this book. But okay, I read the first chapter. I don't know if I should go have lunch. I don't know if lunch is ready. What's life? I don't know. But I'm reading it. It's great. <laughs> It's a great time. Regardless of everything right now, I'm just like, hi Susan Collins is writing, hi Hunger Games World, what's happening? It's a good time so far. Just wanted to inform you after the first chapter because you know, it's the first chapter. I just finished chapter five, 
we have had the reaping um snow and other people have been assigned tributes that they have to mentor i'm not gonna spoil how that works or like what the thing is there because i decided not to include spoilers because i want to post this pretty soon after um release date like ASAP <laughs> like it's the release date and I'm mm, you know so I decided not to include spoilers because I know that people probably wouldn't want to watch that so soon because you know not everyone wants to read this in one day like I do anyway so I'm not gonna spoil how that works or why or anything and I'm not gonna spoil like what his tribute is like or anything but like it has been it has been done <laughs> um it is very interesting it's also a little odd because everything is described so differently and everything kind of works differently and the general opinion of the Hunger Games and like the tributes is so different than in the original Hunger Games series. But I will say that even though I was worried about Snow being the main character in this prequel, let's call it a prequel, it kind of works, at least so far, because Susan Collins hasn't tried to make him more sympathetic or like a character that we could empathize with in a way. Because as you know from the blurb, he's like coming into his power, so like it's not like he's like the most powerful man in Panama yet. Like, not by a long shot. But I don't necessarily feel the need to sympathize with him, despite his circumstances, because he's very much still described as very manipulative, very much a player, very much someone who does not care about risking lives if it gains him what he wants. So I do like that, that he's not like described as like this pristine, completely innocent boy who gets like fucked over by life and that's what makes him a monster, you know? So, so far I'm really enjoying that. I have to go grocery shopping right now. And after that, I will just go sit outside because it's a really nice day. And then I'm gonna read lots and update you as we go. Hello, friends. So this vlog is not gonna work out the way I wanted it to work out. I made it to chapter 11, but today has actually been a huge shit show of a day. Um, it was really not a good day, life-wise. So not a lot of reading got done. But I have hope for tomorrow, I guess, that tomorrow will be better and I actually will finish the book. At least I'm gonna attempt to finish the book. So this is not gonna be a 24 hour reading vlog is gonna be a 48 hour reading vlog I guess maybe hopefully a little less than 48 hours but anyway just wanted to give you an update on how far I made it I essentially finished the first part because chapter 11 that's where like part 2 kicks off at this point I would like things to like move along a little bit because they feel a little stagnant plot wise I don't really have much else to comment on I think I've already commented on stuff that I'm still thinking like the same thing so I don't think I have anything else to add there I'm just like trying to form an opinion in my brain also on like the themes that Susan Collins is trying to employ here because as we all know she is very like I wouldn't say obsessed but like it's important to her to relay some kind of message about war and how the human race moves in cycles essentially so I'm trying to form my opinion on how she is doing that in this book specifically so far but like that's about all for now um i apologize for looking like a piece of raw meat that's how i feel anyway but i apologize for looking it um i might like read a chapter before sleep but you know I just finished chapter 12. I have a very short update for it and the update is no. I did not like that. Mm, no. Hello friends. So as a little update, it's currently about 11.30 at night, which is not ideal because I do have a lot of the book left. I did not give you a full update today, I don't think, 
because I got home from work and then we sat outside and went through all family albums because sometimes you just gotta do that I guess and then I did read for a bit which like that's the clip you saw before these I think so at least and then I did spend like the majority of the evening reading but here's the thing I actually I hate to be the like what are they called just a person who spoils the fun but I'm pretty bored like I would love to finish the book tonight and like if I sit down and buckle down and like read 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 I could finish it by like 2 a.m. or something maybe or like 2 30 which is like my usual sleep time anyway but I'm I'm kind of bored. I'm gonna straight out go ahead and say it. And I'm kind of bored. There was something that happened in chapter 12 that did not make any sense to me, which is where it started going downhill for me. And I'm wondering if just chapter 12 left like a bitter aftertaste in my mouth or if it's something else. Because sometimes I catch myself thinking like, why are things happening the way they are? And then I'm also like, you know... If the Hunger Games had something like Harry Potter does in Pottermore, I'm wondering if this just should have been like a wiki page on like the 10th Hunger Games, you know, or like on a very specific long article about snow. Not much is happening, slash it's not happening in a way that I really wish it was happening. So it's kind of putting me off. So I'm like, my brain is asleep, you know, like I've spent the last two and a half hours reading and I only consumed about a hundred and something pages because I'm just, my brain is asleep. It's, it's putting it to sleep because it's not unfolding the way I so wish it would be unfolding and I don't want to be spoilery, but you know what? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna, <laughs> me at the beginning of this vlog, I'm not gonna say spoilers, me right now, let me spoil. Um, so I'm gonna put up like a huge spoiler thingy here the second it disappears you can like un like unmute it you can mute it if you don't want to see spoilers and then you can unmute it when the spoiler disappears we are going to talk about it now so my huge problem with this right now is like okay the people the tributes are in the arena obviously not a lot of the world is developed that's fun about this book is that it's like the games are definitely not what they are in the original hunger games trilogy so like things are still getting figured out and like we are trying to see what makes the Hunger Games work and what doesn't and the tributes act differently and are treated differently by the capital and Panem in general and like the technology isn't there that it is, that's there in the original trilogy and stuff like that but here's my problem like I would want one of two hi dog I would want one of two things to happen for this book to have dry for me I either want us to get a goddamn move on on how we develop the Hunger Games for the format that we know it in the Hunger Games trilogy or I want more exciting things to be happening with the tributes because so far the tributes have been the most boring part because they are not developed at all. Snow is the only person who is like developed in any way and I still don't understand him sometimes. See chapter 12. Um... And the tributes, you know, they are in the arena and like before they even enter the arena, half of the tributes die off screen in a weird way that's very nondescriptive and has like nothing to do with, you know, the arena or the games or anything whatsoever. And like I understand that Susan Collins is like trying to establish this other version of Capital that existed before the 75th Hunger Games. But it's not working for me in that regard. And also, once they are in the arena, there is not much killing going on there, fam. Like, there are, I think, three or four deaths so far. And, like, 95% out of those happened accidentally. Bitch had tuberculos tuberculosis, so she died. You know, like, accidental deaths like that that, like, have really no meaning. They reflect the time of the 10th Hunger Games. But they have no meaning in the great scheme of things. So essentially I'm confused and kind of bored, spoilers are over, um, I'm kind of, you know, brain's kind of asleep, but you know, I figured I'm gonna try to beat that by going to wash my hair, because like, as you can see, my hair is in desperate need of a wash, I've just been neglecting it, I wanted to wash it yesterday, but as we discussed yesterday, it was not a good day, so there's that, I'm gonna go wash my hair and maybe it will wake my brain up a little bit and I will check in with you when I'm done with the second part because currently I am about halfway through the second part a little towards the end of the second part I'm 
somewhere in the middle of like chapter 17 I think and I think the part two ends with chapter 20 so I'm nearing the end of part two um I will check in with you then I'm gonna go wash my hair I'm aware that this book is called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but do they really have to keep singing? Is it necessary to have so many songs in a book? Songs that aren't even good? <laughs> or is it just me that they're not good? To me they're just cringy. Mm, okay. I just finished part two. So I'm giving you the update, I promised. Uh, that ended abruptly on an unexpected plot twist. I'm very curious to see what the fuck happens in part three. That's honestly the only update I can give you right now. I really did not see that coming. I don't know what it means. I don't know how this wants to wrap up. I don't know how Snow becomes who he becomes for the Hunger Games. I'm shooketh. Um, I guess we'll see. I have another one word review for you for chapter 23 and that word especially in the ending and the last scene in chapter 23 is no. That's another no for me for what happened. I just... it's not necessary. I finished it. I finished The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Um, I didn't love it. I came into this book so goddamn excited. And it just didn't pan out. Here's why. I do not want to include too many spoilers or anything. I think the spoilers that I said last night with like the warning were like enough to like relay my biggest like I guess disappointments with the book. But I'm gonna briefly and vaguely talk about part three. I think it was there just for specific reasons which hint back to the Hunger Games trilogy and if Susan Collins wasn't trying so goddamn hard to tie it all together it wouldn't have been there. I truly think it wasn't there for the sake of the story or to progress the story or anything like that. I think it was literally there just because of the Hunger Games trilogy. I did however like the ending. I didn't like like the writing of it, I was pretty bored for the last five-ish chapters. I was like, please. <laughs> but when I look at like the story as a whole, I guess, or like just the character arc for Snow, I did like it and I did appreciate it a lot. For anyone out there who's like worried about reading this because they think it's a redemption arc, it's definitely not. It's the opposite, really. Like when the summary tells you hey, this is about how Snow comes into power. That's what it is. It is without any kind of other bullshit that usually comes with that. Like, if you're thinking that this is kind of like a Severus Snape redemption arc, just in the Hunger Games universe, that is definitely not true. And I think it was very interesting to see a young adult book with an anti-hero. If you divide the characters into antagonists and protagonists, he definitely wasn't the antagonist in this one, he was definitely the protagonist, but he was an anti-hero. He is a villain regardless, you know? He's just the protagonist of his own story, is what I mean, really. So that was really refreshing and I'm glad, if for nothing else, that the existence and the popularity of the Hunger Games trilogy made it possible for a young adult with a villain as the main character to be out there. Um, some things were really easy to guess for me and I hoped that it would end the way it did but I just didn't really feel the emotional connection to the character. Like, I love to hate a villain, you know? But I can't say that I developed any feelings for Snow or any of the other characters, really. Some things really annoyed me, which I mentioned in the vlog, so I don't know if there's any point in mentioning them again, but the amount of songs in this book really grated on my nerves so hard towards the end that I skipped them. I think the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes also comes at a very timely time, as I think Susan Collins' book usually though, because they kind of reflect, I think, the way she sees the world. And sometimes when I was reading it, I couldn't help but think about refugee camps and Trump and stuff like that, because I don't think it necessarily reflects that 100%, but there's definitely parts where it very much felt like 
that's what it tried to discuss. Um, I don't necessarily think that that's Susan Collins' place to speak about, but maybe that's just me making the connection altogether, you know? So, like, I'm not gonna bash it for something that I'm just, like, thinking in my own head, so, you know. So, yeah. I was very excited. I took something from it. I really enjoyed Snow's character arc and the bones of the story are like so there for me. It was really the execution that didn't work for me 100%, but that's essentially all. So I think I'm gonna give it a three star because the elements were there, you know, it essentially gave me the story that I wanted to read, just not in the form that I wanted to read it in, if that makes any sense. So, like, it was enjoyable for that, but then it wasn't enjoyable as a reading experience. I don't know. It's a confusing time for all of us. Um, I cannot say that I completely loved it and I think it's fantastic, but some parts of it definitely are, at least for me. So, if you ask me if you need to reread the Hunger Games trilogy first, I would say definitely no. I think this is actually a really great prequel that you definitely can't read before reading The Hunger Games or before being familiar with the world of The Hunger Games because I think the original trilogy would be just as fun to read after reading this and picking up the crumbs and seeing all the differences as it is in reverse, you know? So, like, I don't think you need to read them at all. I think they're fun back to back as they are, whether you have read them or not. The crumbs are still there in both novels, so slash trilogies. So there's that. I don't think it's necessary. Um, yeah, if you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it. Let me know what you liked, didn't like, whether you loved it. I would love to know. I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If you did, please leave a like. Subscribe if you want to see more content. I would really appreciate it. And otherwise, until my next video, you can find me on other various social media platforms that I will be linking down below. So thank you ever so much for watching. I will see you soon, but that's all for me for now, and in true Alan Ripley fashion, I am signing off.